right.media. Live from Lucille's Roadhouse, it's the Swasu Coaches Show. Brought to you by ASAP Energy, Anadarko Dozer and Trucking, PSO, Pioneer Cellular, Jet Distributing, CJ Southwest Tire, Butcher's Wine and Spirits, McDonald's of Weatherford, Clinton, and Elk City, Bank First, CK Energy, More Than Medicine, A Plus Roofing, and Weatherford Regional Hospital. Now let's head out to Lucille's with Stephen McTeer. It is Wednesday, so it's the Swasu Coaches Show here at Lou Seals Roadhouse in Weatherford. I'm Stephen McTeer. We'll talk football and golf today. We'll also talk about the general overview of Swasu Athletics because we've got Todd Thurman, Director of Athletics. Coach, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing really good. Um, I guess uh, I'll start here. You haven't been on the show since Haley Tucker was named top nine for NCAA Woman of the Year. Um, obviously a huge honor. I think we all hope that she wins it, but uh, what does that mean for, for Southwestern in general just as, as an athletic department, as a school, to have an individual go that high for a national award? You know, I think that we've always looked at our student athletes as a part of our family and, and a kind of an extension of who we are. Uh, no one has, has done a better job of that than Haley. You know, she's represented us uh, not only as, a, as an athlete, obviously, through, the, uh, through her career, but... Uh, uh, obviously, because of, of the young lady and the type of person that she is, uh, she she's earned this. Uh, she's done everything right. Uh, there's nothing that uh, you can look at and say, you know, maybe maybe she shouldn't have took that shot. Maybe. Or, yeah, sure. But uh, but other than that, she she really has just represented this university unbelievable. You know, and obviously it's it's a great thing. It's kind of a, a feather in the cap for for the university. But you just gotta just gotta be so happy for that young lady. Uh, you know, when you have someone like that, that that represents us in such a great way, but but represents her family, represents her town, represents uh, our alums, and the way that she's done, uh, I can't I can't say enough about her. She's uh, uh, she she uh, represents everything that we hope that we're that we uh, that we are who we are. You know, we talked about women's basketball and you know maybe the inspiration that they would be for for other teams and you know for for the conference in general. But when it comes to Haley. What is an individual doing what she's done? How much do you think that that helps overall within recruiting to, to have someone from Weatherford, Oklahoma, who played basketball here for four years, do the things that she's done? You know, it's, it's going to help all across the board. I think it helps enrollment uh, when you have that kind of attention. Uh, you know, just look what the ladies did this past year, you know, the success they had getting to the championship game. Uh, you know, if you look at the likes and the, and the hits on, on, on social media, uh, those who watch the games uh, on the, on the internet and then watch them live uh, in the game uh, that was televised, uh, it just went everywhere. And mm -hmm. there, there was such a, an outreach uh, of, of support. And again, I think it's bigger than just even our alums and, and our people that are here. I think it, it was it touched everybody that was part of uh, of, of women's basketball. They they watched it. Uh, we got so much great uh, response from it from around the state, from around the nation. Uh, and I think mostly it was because not only because they were winning uh, the style of play. Coach Music does an unbelievable job uh, getting those girls to play at a high level, uh, but who they were. You know, if you if you watch their their press conferences, they were so humble. Uh, they were appreciative. Uh, they were thankful. Um, you know, they 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 didn't really uh, you know boast about anything. They just went and and took a day at a time. And and I think that they they just represent themselves, represent our university in the best possible way. So when you look at advertisement for a university, yeah, I don't know if you can get better than that. I think it stretches out. And it kind of tells you what athletics does. Athletics, uh, if if you have success, uh, it really they say it's the the front step of the university. Well. Uh, it even goes further than that is it could be a, a, one of the largest recruiting tools you have. You talk about marketing and enrollment. That's, you know, if you have a great success in, on, the, uh, on the athletic fields and courts, uh, it really breeds a lot of, of, of uh, attention. And, uh, and again, I think it helps with, uh, with recruitment in every area. I know there's a lot of people, you know, in Weatherford, you talk about, you know, recruitment and enrollment. There's a lot of people in Weatherford that are looking ahead of the future. I know the city is looking at sales tax and, and, and things like that. You know, what's next? I know that the last time that happened, we got the Pioneer Event Center, which is, you know, obviously uh, been a tremendous asset. But so for athletics, what, what's on the horizon as far as capital improvements or anything like that that, uh, that, you, that you're thinking about or even working on? Well, yeah, no, we're done. No, okay. Yeah, this is it. <laughs> That's it. We're not going to It's never changing. 
Uh, no, we're, we've got a list that we continually uh, to, to look at. Um, you know, we went pretty quickly. We went and got the Pioneer Cellular Event Center. We got the turf on the field. Yep. Uh, we uh, got the new soccer facility. We uh, got uh, in, uh, doubled the size of our, our weight room. Uh, we brought in an, a four-bay uh, uh, door uh, golf facility. So we were able to add a lot to, uh, to, our, uh, uh, to our programs and, and to our university. But, uh, you know, there's lots of things that still need to be done. And, and if I'm going to put it in a priority list, i, I got to say our press box. Our press box has got to be done. Uh, Amen. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it, it, it's served its purpose. It's done its job, uh, just kind of like Rankin and Fieldhouse did for all those years, yep. built in 1958. And, uh, you know, and, and, and I love playing there and I loved coaching there. But, uh, but we needed the Pioneer Cellular Event Center, and that's what we got. And, that, and look what happened right away. You know, our women's yeah. basketball team took it to the next level. So I think every time you have an opportunity to, to increase your, your, uh, you know, your, uh, uh, your visual uh, look and, and uh, the fact that people want to be a part of it, but it's even bigger than, than just uh, the fact for our games. You know, we want to bring in more high school games. We want to be able to give people a uh, first-class uh, uh, opportunity when they come here as, a, as being playing on a college uh, mm -hmm. stadium, college campus. So we're continually to to want to increase that, but yeah, that that's uh, that to us is a priority. We want to start really working hard on on trying to get that. Of course, you know our turf field will be coming up to to be renewed again yeah. as well. Like to get new lights, all those type of things. Like to get lights out at the uh, north complex, some baseball, softball, and soccer, so we could play some night games. So there's there's quite a few things that are still on the uh, on the table that. Uh, uh, I'd like to see happen before I leave here uh, because it's it's just one more. Everybody says, "Are you done?" I'm like, "No, we're not done." We're, but we <laughs> but we've got a good start. So uh, I know that there's a big fundraiser coming up a, a couple weeks from now at Oak Tree National, the Everett Dobson fundraiser golf tournament that uh, I still have to practice for because uh, I haven't done a whole lot of that. But uh, uh, I guess talk about that a little bit, what that means for for not only the golf program but but also for athletics in general. Well, first of all, if you haven't practiced till now. Uh, you I don't go played, to, don't go to Oak Tree. That's I not where you start. Twice you know, you, last uh, week, just not this week. Okay, all right, because uh, Oak Tree is quite the course. Uh, we got to thank uh, Everett Dobson for for putting this together for us. It's a fantastic fundraiser. Obviously, it benefits our our golf team. Um, you know, and, and the success that they had last year, I yeah. think, has a lot to do with this fundraiser. Has a lot to do with their facility. Once again, we talk about facilities and recruitment. Um, and and so you know. Uh, Everett wanted to do something special, uh, and, and again, it started off with just being the golf team. Now it's the entire athletic department. Uh, you know, and, and when you have commitment from donors and alumni like that, uh, that's what you need in order to move to the next level, and in order to have the opportunity uh, to reach for the and we call it the stars. You know, we want to we want to keep going, and and guys like that that are willing to uh, to help us uh, reach those goals uh, is is fantastic. Uh, you got to give credit to our, our foundation, Clark Hale, you know, mm -hmm. and, and Garrett King, and, and all of them at the at the foundation, because they've really have, have have cultivated that, and it's grown. I think the first year, I think we raised I don't know about ten or fifteen thousand dollars. Now we're up to around fifty, sixty thousand uh, dollars. I think it's going to keep growing. Uh, I think their goal was to be over a hundred thousand at, at one time or another. So that, but the, you you got to have events like that to have the opportunity. And if we went go a little bit further, you know, we have the legacy group for football that mm -hmm. continues to raise money and and to do things for the football program so I think every program has that but we also have uh, lots of donors that want to see the entire department grow and, and continue to, to uh, advance and be competitive you have to play in the tournament in a couple weeks or you're are, are you up for up for auction there oh yeah no no I, I actually brought my own team in because I knew Excellent. nobody would bid on me sure and so uh, they, everybody has seen me play and hadn't seen me play they wouldn't want me anyway so uh, okay, I, I, I just wouldn't got my own guys and said you guys have no choice you got me so, that's a good point yeah. you haven't heard about the uh, me and coach music getting angry with each other because she plays golf once every 10 years and says you play all the time so if I beat you you'll never be able to show your face in Weatherford again which is a complete and total fact yeah she's no, as good at trash talking as anybody oh no, no she's really good at it yeah. and actually I didn't want to tell you this she's a really good golfer too so you're oh, in crap. yeah so you know, seriously you know, step off yeah she says she only plays <laughs> once every 10 years and well, that, she doesn't need to play more than that oh so. my gosh well all right I guess I got to get to practicing uh coach Don Thurman with us senior director of athletics at Southwestern coach appreciate you coming on Appreciate you having me. Take a break. We'll come back with football coach Chet Poblish. We'll talk about the dogs in Magnolia last week. We'll also talk about Henderson State coming up this week on the Swasu Coaches Show. ASAP General Stores have seven Western Oklahoma locations conveniently located in Weatherford, Clinton, Henson, and Thomas. At ASAP General Stores, you will always find a clean and friendly atmosphere. Hello. Fresh, hot food. Delicious. As well as gas and diesel. Use your kickback card and get rewarded for all your purchases from a store you can trust. ASAP General Stores. Stop by any of the seven Western Oklahoma locations in Weatherford, Clinton, Hinton, and Thomas. So, what are you waiting for? Get there ASAP. 
Here's Jay and Angie Wyatt, owners of Anadarko Dozer and Trucking. We think the cream of the crop is, is all that we are. It shows not only our safety records, the reports we get from the customers. Even if we don't have a position to fill, if the right applicant walks in the door, we will take the time, we will visit with them, and, and it may be a situation where we weren't looking for that person, but when they walked in the door, you know, they're the right person for us. Apply now at Anadarko Dozer and Trucking on South Main in Elk City or in Hinton, three miles south on 281. There's a new energy in Oklahoma. Wind and natural gas working together, keeping your energy prices steady and affordable. Clean, affordable, natural gas and wind. Oklahoma's new energy from PSO. There's a new energy in Oklahoma. Wind and natural gas working together, creating jobs and more money for communities and schools. Clean, affordable, natural gas and wind. Oklahoma's new energy from PSO. Coors Light is cold pack. Peak refreshment. The world's most refreshing beer, Coors Light. When was the last time you looked at your cellular bill? No, I mean really looked at your cellular bill. Pioneer has introduced new plans that'll help you find the savings on cellular service so you don't pay more than you should. How about this? Pioneer's new family plans offer unbeatable prices on the area's most reliable cellular network. For example, now get three lines with 20 gigabytes of data for just $90 per month. Wow. Stop by a Pioneer store or call us at 1-800-641-2732 to find the savings. We're back here on the Swasu Coaches Show. Now time to talk some Bulldog football with head coach Chet Pobelish. Coach, thanks for coming out. Thanks for having me as always. You get set second billing because Coach Thurman's here, which we all, we, all, we all take a step down there, I guess. He's the boss. He is indeed. Uh, Southern Arc last week in Magnolia, uh, you know, final score 42-20, to 20, but uh, beyond the final score, uh, you know, I guess let's kind of dive in. First half, slow start, down 28 to nothing. I, there's something about Arkansas trips, I think, for all Oklahoma schools that are, that are just, they take some getting used to. And when you got a new team like you guys have, it seems like, you know, even the transition is a little bit tougher. But you guys were able to put two scores back on the board. What allowed you to go from 28 nothing in the second quarter down to early second half, down just 28 to, what, 13? Yeah. Uh, you know, I thought all along we could play with them. We just, we made some mistakes early and, Started off slow, and I, you know, I hate to use the fact that the long trip made us start slow. I mean, that's just that just bothers the heck out of me because, you know, I want it to be all about us, and you know, I've always said that. But you know, when we as a staff and as a team this this week try to address why we're starting off slow and try to do some things different, and got to get that dressed. And you know, it's a team I thought we could play with, and I knew we were gonna have to play well, but I thought we could. Uh, I really thought offensively we started off really slow, and we put our defense in some bad spots. And you know, I, I think. You know, the last maybe first two touchdowns, of the last two games, the offenses went three and out, and we just can't do that. I mean, it just doesn't. It's not good for momentum. Doesn't set your defense up well. It doesn't good for field position. So we got to start off faster in offense and give our defense a little better chance. I know that you know, we talked last week a lot about about the early downs and how important it was for positive yards on first and second down. That's obviously important for for any team, but for you guys especially. You know, when when you made that comeback. Did you did you feel like you guys were able to, to execute a little bit better on on, on first and second down and, and going forward? How do you become more consistent in that? Yeah, well, let me start by you know our, our goal on on offense is to, to rush for four yards of carry on first down, and we were at one point five. Um, you know, so that just goes to show you how far off our goal is. But you know, it was just a matter of we really concentrated later in that game of trying to get the ball in the hands of the guys that, that had experience. Um, and we felt comfortable with that would do 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 what they were supposed to do. And you know we're playing a lot of young players, and that can't be an excuse. But the guys with more experience are the guys that, that we are, we're counting on right now. I know that you know when the score, you know, obviously you know 42 to 20 is not the most lopsided score in the world. But when there is a score like that or a game like that, and we talked about this after the Monticello game, it's so easy to just focus on the negatives. But when you've watched tape this week, what are positives that you've taken from that game? A lot of it's fixable. I mean, that's that's the main thing. It's it's not we're getting we're getting whooped or we're getting out athleted or we're getting better players. It's it's things I think there's a lot of things that we can fix. Um, you know, there's a, there's a couple plays where we have a couple guys out of position. Um, there's a couple plays where, you know, we got guys with just their second start and you know they're they're just a step off and, and it's costing us right now and it's just something we got we got to get fixed as coaches and I think we've done a great job. You know, on the other side of the ball, we're just 
you know, Tyler Marr or whoever he's thrown to six inches here or there, and there's a couple big plays, and then they end up being incompletions, and you just can't do that. You talk about the young guys, and there's certainly a lot of them playing uh, defensively, especially. It's not ideal, like you said, but, you know, to get those guys experience, that's, that's going to pay off in the long run. I know it's frustrating now, but, but how important is it for those guys to kind of go through these growing pains? It, it is, but I think it, it's important, especially for me, to continue to see the big picture, you know, and to make sure that the program is heading in the right direction and moving forward. And I, and I really think that it is because, yes, yeah, some guys are getting more playing time than, than they need to be or they should be, but, you know, they're getting better. Their, their experience is getting better. Um, they, they understand, you know, there's not a lot of, oh, you know, finger pointing stuff like that it's you know i gotta get in this position i gotta do this and you know i'm pleased with that and it's going to pay off in the long run and it's my job to, to make sure that everybody continues to see that that that's that's the main goal of this program i know that uh, henderson state in town this week that's one of the teams that doesn't make a living running the football the uh, stametti's a great quarterback he's got you know one of the best wide receivers in the conference outside so how much does your preparation differ if at all from a team like you know washita or monticello or southern arc that loves to run the ball to a team that's going to throw it 60 times it doesn't differ just your your areas of emphasis differ in how you know what you what you're trying to stop and what you're trying to force them to do or what you're trying to do on offense you know you know i still think you got to stop the run you know last year we did a good job of that and we forced them to we knew that they had to pass and i think that's why we had an advantage but you know you just got to make sure that you you try to handle what they're good at and try to keep that under control and then win the other phases with the injuries that you've got defensively, uh, d does a team that throws it more suit you guys with the personnel that you throw out there, or, or is it does that really not matter all that much? It, it, it comes down to execution, whether it's how you're fitting the run or how you fit in the coverage or you know where you're supposed to be. You know, it doesn't matter. It's about execution and doing what you're supposed to do and how you're supposed to do it. I know that uh, you know coming in with five games down, basically the halfway point of the season pretty much, uh, I guess at, at this point kind of take stock of, of what you've seen over the first five games, likes, dislikes from the first part of the season. Uh, dislike the injuries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we all do. Yeah, I mean, it's really hard. I think I said, you know, we're, we're down our, a bunch of linebackers. and I mean, that's what I dislike, but there's nothing you can do about that. You can't control it. Yeah. So what I do like is our team's attitude. You know, we, we had a, a big talk about attitude today. And I was talking about five guys, five guys I didn't think had the attitude that, that I wanted where I wanted to be, but that's not acceptable. One's not acceptable. And I try to get them to understand that and try to get, you know, the other 135 to get on board and get those other five where we need them to be. And you know, that's what we got to do. We all got to move in the same direction, have a good attitude, be our best and be consistent. And that's what I told them today. And I've told them that from day one. Big game Saturday, Bulldogs hosting Henderson State. It's a 3 o'clock kickoff at Milam Stadium. Coach Tim Publish with us. Coach, thanks for coming out. Appreciate thanks, it. Appreciate you having me. Take another break. We'll talk about the decimated linebacking core. There's not a whole lot of the guys. That I think, I, what did I see today in Doug's game notes? That, that three guys on defense have started all five games. <laughs> Probably that's, that's, about right. that's what they've been facing. We'll talk with linebackers coach Michael Gallo coming up next here on the Swasu Coaches Show. Need your oil and filter changed? Take your vehicle to CJ Southwest Tire in Weatherford. There is no appointment needed. Bring your car, truck, or diesel in today. You can wait in the comfort of their smoke-free lounge while experienced technicians change your oil and filter on your vehicle. CJ Southwest Tire on the corner of Maine and Kansas in Weatherford. Your Bridgestone and Firestone dealer. CJ Southwest Tire. See them on Facebook and at cjsouthwesttire.com. When it's time to unwind, pick up a bottle of your favorite stuff at Butcher's Wine and Spirits in Weatherford. All the top brands at the absolute best price. From whiskey, bourbon, gin, and scotch to your favorite craft, import, or domestic beer, Butcher's has you covered. And when it comes to wine, Butcher's has the best selection in town. And don't forget to check out their sale rack with deep discounts. Butcher's Wine and Spirits on Main in Weatherford. Bank First is loyal to the same spirit of industry and ingenuity seen across decades of life in Weatherford. Still a proud stop on Route 66, the vibrant modern reality has the loyalty of local people who run this Bank First, where a rising powerhouse of wind energy joins a renewable source of brain power at Southwestern Oklahoma State University. Bank First, loyal to Oklahoma, loyal to you. 
you. Family and CK Energy Electric Cooperative, it's the ideal partnership. CK Energy makes every customer an owner of the business. Unlike other electric utilities, CK Energy exists to make sure your needs are always met, not to make a profit. We are locally owned and operated, and we are always there with you, reinvesting in your community. That's why in an electric co-op, the people have the power. Owned by our communities, committed to our members. CK is your energy. Welcome back to the Swasu Coaches Show here at Loose Hills Roadhouse in Weatherford. Sticking with football and sticking with the linebackers. We've got linebackers coach Michael Gallo with us. Coach, how are you tonight? I'm doing pretty well. Thank you for having me. I know that, uh, you know, we, we talk injuries. You guys have had your fair share of those. It's uh, It's been a struggle, certainly. But, uh, you know, first year in, in Weatherford, you get a whole lot of new faces coming in as well. How's the transition been? Are you enjoying yourself so far? Oh, I'm always enjoying myself. You know, I'm just thankful for the opportunity to be out here in Weatherford and be with some people that, you know, coached me and people that I really admire and I really enjoy to be around, you know. And, yeah, it's been a transition. Don't get me wrong, a lot of new faces. But it's just like anything every year. You get new faces, new bodies, new people. So, you know, once you get it rolling, it's just kind of like a family atmosphere. And, you know, you just come together and it's, it's just football at the end of the day. I think obviously, you know, injuries, you guys have had a lot of personnel shifts. You've had a lot of players playing minutes that maybe you didn't think they were going to play at the beginning of the year. What's been the biggest challenge with, with all the new guys coming in and having to shift around so many guys? Oh, yeah, like like you talked about, you know, injuries hit every football team, but, you know, it's it's hit our linebacker port, core pretty good. Um, you can never replace the experience that some of those older guys have, you know, just having as many juniors and seniors as we had. Um, so, you know, just getting those guys ready is the biggest thing and making sure, you know, they're seeing what they need to see and they're reacting to what they're seeing. But, you know, injuries hit every program. But the, the good thing about that is some of the younger guys that we're now getting reps that maybe, you know, we weren't relying on to play is moving forward. You know, when we're talking about program aspects is that now they're getting a lot of reps. And now that we get some of those older guys back is those younger guys are going to continue to get reps and continue to grow, which is huge for our linebacking core is now, you know, those guys that maybe weren't going to see those minutes have now seen those minutes and seen those plays. So if we have to rely on them and call on their number, you know, I always tell my guys, you know, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. So that's something that's big with my group. And, you know, they're working hard. And every day, you know, we're going to continue to get better and just continue to progress at that position, you know, no matter who's out there. I know that, you know, statistically, you know, teams have been able to run the ball the last few weeks. You know, is there is there a shift that you guys, you know, have worked on or, or mentality changed? To, you know, because coaches talked about this, you know, the last few weeks is stopping the run. You know, how how do you move towards getting teams stopped on the run? You know, and that's, you know, it, it all goes back to fundamentally what we want to do. And we want to be mentally and physically tough. You know, that's something that we can control, kind of like our attitude and effort. So we're going to continue to work on those things and continue to be tough. You know, a lot of teams, is, as they've seen, they're probably going to come out and run. So our biggest thing will be to stop the run. But at the end of the day, you know, it's all about us. I, we don't try to focus on what other teams are doing, what they're going to game plan. It's just all about us. So we just got to make sure we're executing, we're fitting where we need to fit, and we're making the plays we need to make. And at the end of the day, you know, it's on me, and I'm going to continue to get those guys better and continue to, you know, get them in the right position to make those plays. But I have no doubt in my mind, you know, we just get our swagger back kind of like we had the first two games, you mm -hmm. know, like Stella get a groove back. And there's no doubt in my mind, you know, we're going to be able to shut down that run and get back to the football that we were playing early. Henderson State obviously loves to throw the ball. They're going to come in and throw it regardless. So when you when you have conversations with your group, how do they differ from maybe like a Harding or a Washita week as opposed to a team that you know is going to go out there and throw the ball regardless? Well, I mean, you, that's their tendency is to throw the football. But at the end of the day, you know, week to week, you never know what a team's going to come in and do. And, you know, they can completely rewrite the script and come out and run the ball 50 times a game. So no matter what we face, it's – I, you know, I'll continue to preach it. It's just all about us. So mm -hmm. as long as we can continue to play football and make sure we're shutting down that run, you know, we're going to – we want them to throw the football in a sense because we don't want them to run the ball 50 times a game. You know, we want to stop the run and force them to get in those situations. Because I think, you know, when teams have had to throw the football throw the football on us, we come up with takeaways. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's all about just getting us in the right position, you know, making sure throughout the week and we've had a good week of practice and continue to see that, continue to see those reps and those routes. And there's no doubt in my mind, as long as we get after that quarterback that – get them uncomfortable it doesn't matter what they do Dalton Cooper is going to join us next uh, talking about him a little bit and uh, you know he makes the transition from outside to inside linebacker I guess uh, to 
take us through uh, the value that he's brought to the linebackers. Oh, he's he, that kid is a warrior. He's a true warrior. I mean, to be able to mentally, you know, it's tough to be able to switch positions, you know, that deep in the year and now have to learn kind of a whole new fit because it's a different world from playing out on the edge to now playing in the bo- in the middle of the box with everything around you. But, you know, he's been he's attacked it. He's came in every day and watched film with me. He's continued to grow and get better. I mean, that kid is the true epitome of what we want on this football team. It's just somebody that, you know, when he's re- when he's asked to be, you know, step up and do what he needs to do, he does that to a T and he works his butt off. And, you know, that's a testament to that kid that he's able to physically do both and be able to, you know, swing and be a joker and be an inside linebacker. That's huge for him and that's huge for us. And, you know, what he brings to our at to our table and to our room is huge just from experience wise as well as like I said so many older guys going down so that's huge I mean the kid has been a great addition and you know I'm going to hopefully keep him in there with me for a little bit longer we'll talk with Dalton coming up next year on the Swasu Coaches Show but he's linebackers coach Michael Gallo coach thanks for coming out appreciate, I appreciate it you. appreciate you having me we'll have Dalton on next year on the Swasu Coaches Show On the corner of Custer and Main Street in Weatherford, More Than Medicine stands ready to fill your prescriptions in a fast, friendly, and professional way. They also offer an outstanding selection of gifts for people of all ages. Their Gold Crown Hallmark card selection is second to none, and More Than Medicine is the perfect place for a bridal registry. All this, that's why it's called More Than Medicine. Corner of Main and Custer in Weatherford. They're on call for you 24 hours a day. The weather in western Oklahoma is unpredictable. When you need help, folks have been counting on the expertise of A-plus roofing and construction. Owned and operated by Damon Schultz, a GAF certified contractor. Fully insured with an A-plus rating by the Better Business Bureau. A-plus roofing always offers free estimates. Call today, 580-772-7587. That's 772-7587. Here before and after the storm. A-plus roofing and construction in Weatherford. Convenient Care got just even more convenient. Weatherford Convenient Care has moved locations. You can now get that convenient one-on-one personal care at the Weatherford Regional Hospital. Just enter the far west entrance, labeled Main Entrance, and they will get you checked in and on your way to fast, convenient, one-of-a-kind care. Or skip the wait and check in online at weatherfordhospital.com. Weatherford Convenient Care, now located inside the Weatherford Regional Hospital at 3701 West Main. Open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. ASAP General Stores have seven Western Oklahoma locations conveniently located in Weatherford, Clinton, Henson, and Thomas. At ASAP General Stores, you will always find a clean and friendly atmosphere. Hello. Fresh, hot food. Delicious. As well as gas and diesel. Use your kickback card and get rewarded for all your purchases from a store you can trust. ASAP General Stores. Stop by any of the seven Western Oklahoma locations in Weatherford, Clinton, Henson, and Thomas. So, what are you waiting for? Get there ASAP. Here's Jay and Angie Wyatt, owners of Anadarko Dozer and Trucking. We think the cream of the crop is, is all that we hire. It shows not only our safety records, the reports we get from the customers. Even if we don't have a position to fill, if the right applicant walks in the door, we will take the time, we will visit with them, and, and it may be a situation where we weren't looking for that person, but when they walked in the door, you know, they're the right person for us. Apply now at Anadarko Dozer and Trucking on South Main in Elk City or in Hinton, three miles south on 281. Back here to Lucille's Roadhouse on the Swansu Coaches Show on this Wednesday night, we have got Dalton Cooper. I was going to say outside linebacker, but no longer. Now inside yeah. linebacker for the Bulldogs. He's one of three guys that has started all five games on defense this year. Uh, Coop, I, let's talk about the move. You go from outside to inside. Uh, yeah. Biggest challenge for you making that transition, especially in the middle of the year? It's it's the reads. The reads are completely different when you move from outside to inside. Outside, you only have to read a tackle, and it's very easy. When you go inside, you got to read a guard, an other side tackle, a tight end. Like, it's just a lot different. And your eyes, you got to trust your eyes. Out there, it's easy to trust them. Like, you only have one read. Exactly. But pullers and everything else, it just changes stuff. So it's just a little harder to get your eyes right. Yeah, I know that you guys have had a whole lot of injuries, you know, especially from the inside spot to, and, you know, be, being kind of the guy that, that's kind of the general out there. How hard has it been for you to kind of negotiate who you've got out there because you've got so many faces? I mean, when we're out there at the outside, everybody's kind of leading. Everybody's yelling out. Everybody has their own job to lead by an example or call out the plays. Like Joker, you call out the strength. Insides, you're calling what the play is, and everybody's getting the call. So it's it's the same, kind of. You're just focusing on more stuff, and you just got to 
bring other people with you and make sure everyone else around you gets the call and not just out there. I know that, you know, when we talked about this Henderson State, they, they throw the ball quite a bit. Yep. For you guys, you know, and even, you know, Coach Gallup brought this up, how important is it for you to, to stay so disciplined knowing that they may not do what they've done all season long and they may turn around and try to run it at, on you guys instead of throw it? Well, I mean, sometimes we haven't stopped the run as well as we wanted to. So it's not – it wouldn't be a surprise necessarily. But, I mean, tendencies-wise, you know, they all – everybody has a tendency. But it shouldn't be – that effective if we can just stop the run it shouldn't be a problem as long as we can do what we're supposed to do has there been you know kind of a shift in the way that you know you approach the game from a mentality perspective you know m making sure that you're more adept to you know knowing the things that they like to do as far as the passing game goes uh i mean just i mean not really you just got to be more you got to get your eyes other places too you can't be so focused on run mm -hmm. like you got to expect pass so you got to get your eyes ready to drop and you gotta trust your drops and just be in the right spot for when they do pass it if they do more often than they run through five games in your mind what's what's the one thing that that you've seen from your team and in your group specifically from game one to now what's the biggest thing that you guys have improved on in your mind i think trusting ourselves and knowing like that we can play with a top dog team like washta mm -hmm. um it's just you know we know what we can do and when we do our jobs we're really good but if, if one person messes up, then it can bust, and then we lose our running game, and somebody's running all over us, and if we don't do our job in the passing game, we get a touchdown scored. So just trusting ourselves is the biggest thing that I think we've learned, and by doing that, it allows us to be a better team overall, and execution skyrockets. Biggest thing that you still want your guys to improve on through the last, what, six games? I would say just trusting yourselves in, like, finishing. Like, don't get – if we're up, like – finish the game don't let them come back and if we're down then you got to finish it and come back so i mean just got to be ready to finish the game and the middle name storm how did we get that <laughs> my grandpa gave it to me when i was born and it's just been ever since and he used to call my sister my sister was latin and i was thunder that was one of the nicknames as we grew up so it's just kind of all stuck. Right. I thought if that was a family name, that'd be the coolest family name ever. If you were no, born on not, a severe thunderstorm a morning. Possible. I don't know. I had to ask him. You have to ask that. All right. Coolest middle name ever. Uh, Dalton Cooper with us here on the Swasu Coaches Show. Thanks for coming out, buddy. Thanks Appreciate for having it. me. We'll talk a little Swasu golf coming up. We'll have Coach Fleetwood up next on the Swasu Coaches Show. There's a new energy in Oklahoma. Wind and natural gas working together, keeping your energy prices steady and affordable. Clean, affordable, natural gas and wind. Oklahoma's new energy from PSO. There's a new energy in Oklahoma. Wind and natural gas working together, creating jobs and more money for communities and schools. Clean, affordable, natural gas and wind. Oklahoma's new energy from PSO. time you looked at your cellular bill. No, I mean really looked at your cellular bill. Pioneer has introduced new plans that'll help you find the savings on cellular service so you don't pay more than you should. How about this? Pioneer's new family plans offer unbeatable prices on the area's most reliable cellular network. For example, now get three lines with 20 gigabytes of data for just $90 per month. Wow. Stop by a Pioneer store or call us at 1-800-641-2732 to find the savings. Need your oil and filter changed? Take your vehicle to CJ Southwest Tire in Weatherford. There is no appointment needed. Bring your car, truck, or diesel in today. You can wait in the comfort of their smoke-free lounge while experienced technicians change your oil and filter on your vehicle. CJ Southwest Tire on the corner of Maine and Kansas in Weatherford. Your Bridgestone and Firestone dealer. CJ Southwest Tire. See them on Facebook and at cjsouthwesttire.com.
Back here on the Swasu Coaches Show at Lucille's Roadhouse, we've got golf coach Brad Fleetwood with us. We'll talk about the Everett Dobson tournament because basically here's what it, here's what I need. I We've played together twice now, so I need to know what I need to work on in my game like from Fair. a coaching perspective. Fair but enough. we'll get to that. Okay. Uh, you had tournaments this week. Uh, you were in Missouri, both teams in Missouri. I guess guys first, fifth place, Holiday Inn Express. Was it the Classic, the Invitational? I think that's what it was yeah. called, wasn't it? Uh, whatever it was. Doesn't whatever. Matter. Yeah. It was in St. Joe. Uh, Connor Boynston plays really, really well. Shoots a 67. I wonder what that's like. Um, thoughts from the, from their tournament, how they did? You know what? It, it just It's kind of the same old, same old with our guys right now. Yeah. We have had um, probably one of the lowest rounds of every tournament in a single round mm-hmm. and just not backed it up, either not started well or not finished well. Uh, but we've had one unbelievable round that has kept us in each golf tournament and so it's kind of a be honest with you from a coaching standpoint it's a little bit of a a little bit of a conundrum um to say the least i mean we're just we're trying to figure it out we know we've got a really solid group of guys um we've had three guys now that have been our low finisher gregor and and casen at muskogee Mm -hmm. um being tied third obviously casen went in shangri la um and now connor boydson a true freshman coming out and did what did what he did this week which is unbelievable in an incredible field so um guy's second tournament and he finishes tied fours yeah. and has an opportunity to win i mean really so so we a lot of encouragement there um we just don't honestly we don't feel like we're a fifth place team um but at the same time with the way we've played in some of the other rounds those fifth place could have been eighth ninth tenth and we could be in a, in a pretty tough spot so we're we're not really complaining about it. We just want to figure out how we can get that consistency to where we need it to be. You know, you talk about depth, and you know, obviously, and I guess we we haven't you haven't been on here since since Kaysen won his tournament sure. at uh, at Shangri La, which obviously, you know, I was a little jealous that you guys got to go there <laughs> first and foremost. But he wins the thing, and it was a weird one. The weather shortened it, and he, you know, he came out and had to, had. 190 in on a hole because weather you know had shortened his round but sure. uh, i guess talk about that a little bit and, and, and how big a deal that was for not only him but a local kid yeah that was big for case and he's been so close so many times and um for whatever reason hasn't been able to close the deal and and, and not necessarily from his standpoint and oftentimes he's played well and somebody's just played better so yeah. it's not that he's gone out and lost tournaments he's just gotten beaten in some cases but um that one was really strange because um again he chose not to finish the round because of darkness him Mm -hmm. and one other player out of a hundred and probably 10 players there were two that chose not to finish and it and it was too dark i encouraged him not to yeah um but as a result he got in saw exactly where he stood knowing that he had um he had a certain shot in front of him and 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 Mm -hmm. knew exactly what he had to do and so um even though that final round got suspended because of rain um he finished that off in fashion um, went out. He was 100 and I think 90 yards out. Hit a five iron to a tucked pin to about 15 feet. Made the putt. First shot of the day. And too. yeah, first shot of the day. <laughs> yeah, bad. it was 7:30 in the morning, and uh, and did that knowing that he had to do it to win. Yeah. And so that was pretty incredible. I was really proud of Case, and that was um, that was well deserved, and it was kind of um, long time coming for him. So. I guess let's talk about the girls. The, they were in Warrensburg, right? How the, how the heck do you manage Warrensburg and St. Joe? Are you just driving back and forth? Is that the deal? No, no. I uh, When we do that, when we have tournaments offsetting like that, I, we, we decide I'm – I'm going to go to one. My assistant's going to go to another, okay. and so we we switch off back and forth. So I thought maybe like at noon you were hopping in no, a car and going 110 no. down to. Doesn't work that way. Okay, good. Yeah. That's and, probably and it's good not thing. good. Not good for anybody for that. It doesn't benefit anybody to do that. So, um, so our assistant Oli Hatlila did a great job with her women as he's done so far this year, and so he just happened to be with him this week or with those girls this week, and uh, they did a great job. And that's going to be where our regionals at. It was a regional preview. Okay. Um, it's a phenomenal golf course. It's a tough golf course, and um, you know we we did something that we have not done well this year, and we we started off really well and uh, got herself in position uh didn't have a great final round but at the same time did enough in the first round to kind of position ourselves to uh to have a good finish and so again really proud of the girls this year you know we there's so many new faces and so <laughs> you know so much going on there's it's just a yeah. lot to lot to take in um that first semester we start so early and um again so many international students trying to um, get acclimated. Yeah, just absolutely get acclimated to, to school, to America, to, to just everything. So 
Um, so I'm extremely proud of what they've been able to do this year. And, um, yeah, we got one more, and we'll see what happens. I know at, at St. Albans, St. Albans Country Club, just outside of Missouri, that's the national preview. So that's the course, obviously, that uh, next semester uh, the national tournament will be at. You know, that's a long way off. A lot of things can happen between, you know, now and then. But, but how important is it for you guys, especially for the women, to see – the course they'll play regionals at and see the course they'll play the national tournament at is that a big time benefit or is it or are they so far in between that it's not that big of an advantage yeah i'm going to be honest with you we did not choose this from a schedule standpoint to see the national course yeah um it just happened to fit in um we had some a little bit of a scheduling conflict with the uh, with the dobson tournament mm -hmm. um which uh, again is such a benefit to us in the athletic department so um, so this this is a tournament that happened just to fit really well for us. And so, yeah, it's a good tournament, a great field. And, yeah, if we're fortunate enough to be there uh, in May, then such a such a benefit for us to already have 36 or 54 holes on that golf course. So, um, so yeah, there's nothing lost on that deal. It'll, it'll be a great golf, golf tournament, great golf course, and, uh, and a great field. Everett Dobson tournament coming up uh, Tuesday, October 22nd at Oak Tree, and it's the Oak Tree, too. Um, you know, I, I want to get into, you know, what, what I need to prepare for in a, in a minute. But, uh, you know, you talk about benefit not only to the entire athletic department, which I think is tremendous, but how much does that tournament mean to you guys as the golf program? You know, and it, honestly, we're kind of learning what this means to us, to a, to a, to a golf program. You know, um, this tournament was um, kind of a pledge. Uh, back to, to Everett Dobson for what he did for us and mm -hmm. in our facility. And now as we've met that pledge, we're, um, it's, it's, it's become a fundraiser now. And so, um, so yes, to, to answer that, it's, it's a huge benefit to us. Um, to what extent, we're not even sure yet. And so I think everybody is kind of kind of mm -hmm. wondering, to, you know, to what extent that that, you know, this, this fundraiser is, 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 is going to mean and, and how much funds it's going to raise. So, um, but, but regardless, it's going to be a great day on a great golf course. Um, I, I think the money that the foundation, um, Jessica Hurd, Caleb McQuillan, and um, Clark Hell and, and Garrett King, that they've already raised just in sponsorship so far have been, yeah. been amazing. So, um, so everything else is just going to be um, just going to be extra. So um, it's going to be a great day. It's going to certainly be a, a, a wonderful wonderful thing for us as a golf team. It's going to be a great thing for the athletic department. And, and so, yeah. I think it's going to be something that's going to be um, it's going to be good for years to come for us. All right, so we've played together twice. We've been successful in those tournaments, and I feel like I've played pretty well. So, Oak Tree, I'm not the longest player off the tee. You know that. I'm, I'm pretty straight. <laughs> uh, I feel like I putt okay. Sometimes I can putt like a blind guy. But what in the world do I have to get ready for for this ah. thing? You know, I don't know. I, I don't know if I have the. Uh, I don't know if I have the, uh, the coaching advice for you right if now. If you but, tell me that's beyond your coaching skill, I will be so offended. Uh, <laughs> it, it's gonna be. Uh, What's gotta, the most important thing? You got to keep it in play. Okay. Absolutely, got to keep it in play. And so it's it won't play super long, just because with it being a benefit tournament okay, like it is, good. they're not gonna play it super long. So keeping it in play is gonna be gonna be paramount. Um, so um, the greens are really tough out there, and we've played it in the spring. Um, in the past, so I don't know how quick they're going to have the greens. If they've got them quick, then being in the right spot is going to be pretty, pretty important. So, um, but again, number one on that place, being in play, having an opportunity after your after your tee shot is thank goodness going to be. I can do that. Yeah, you got that. But so. but but you know, if we're talking, you're, you're, you know, you got to be two ninety off the tee. That's not me. I don't I don't have that. No, I don't think you got to have that out there. Not I mean, on a it would help on a typical day. Back tees, yeah, you got to have that. Ooh, yeah. But but for this event, no. Okay, it's, good. I shoot a hundred out there if you play. For the back they do tees. a great job about setting it up fair and making it fun for everybody. So it's yeah, it's a great day. Uh, you know, I, we, we're also obviously going to fill out our team with 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 one of the golfers from from your team. Yeah, we're trying to figure out. Is it beneficial to go with one of the girls because they get the advantage off the tee? And you've got some big hitters on the girls' team. I know that. I, I thoughts because at this point Heston Wright and I are, are almost arguing about this trying to figure this out I'm going to be honest with you I if I was in your position and I was purchasing a player yes I'd get a girl I think I think that's yeah. right our females are obviously they're extremely talented to begin with um, you put them from the front tees that's and huge right it's a game changer I think so, okay that's what I thought too 
again, and you know, we've we've only got six in our roster, and they are all extremely talented. Um, yeah, I don't think you go wrong with getting a, getting one of our girls. Okay, good. That's I'll yeah. pass that along because okay. that's Do that's it. expert information. <laughs> uh, last one, and uh, you know, we're going to talk uh, here coming up with with Rebecca. Um, one of your one of your freshmen, one of your international mm-hmm. students, talk about her. Obviously, she was the top individual performer uh, in Warrensburg, and, and and kind of the obviously it's a big transition coming over to the states. But just to kind of take us through how she's done this fall. Yeah, Rebecca's had a great year so far, and so we've um, again it's a big transition. Um, it's been a big transition for so many of our players, and so Rebecca's done such a wonderful job. And this this tournament, I think, was was. Uh, more than anything, just kind of a coming out for her and, and having two solid rounds put together in, in, a, in a top 10 in this tournament is huge. Um, I mean, this is as, this is as loaded of a, of a field as we've played in so far. Um, you know, Zoe Morton, who's a redshirt freshman this year, has come out and played extremely well. Um, we've had some, um, we just had some really, some really good performances from each individual. We're just, we're kind of working on putting those all together um, at one time. And I think when we do, we're as, we're as good anybody, as anybody in this region right now. So, um, but again, it's a learning experience, and um, we know that we're gonna, there's going to be some learning curves that go along with that. And um, we're really pleased with what our girls have done so far. Absolutely. Coach Brad Fleetwood with us as we get ready not only for the Everett Dobson tournament, but also to talk with one of his uh, women's golf team members, Rebecca Lau, as we come back here on the Swasu Coaches Show. When it's time to unwind, pick up a bottle of your favorite stuff at Butcher's Wine and Spirits in Weatherford. All the top brands at the absolute best price, from whiskey, bourbon, gin, and scotch, to your favorite craft, import, or domestic beer, Butcher's has you covered. And when it comes to wine, Butcher's has the best selection in town. And don't forget to check out their sale rack with deep discounts. Butcher's Wine and Spirits on Main in Weatherford. Bank First is loyal to the same spirit of industry and ingenuity seen across decades of life in Weatherford. Still a proud stop on Route 66, the vibrant modern reality has the loyalty of local people who run this Bank First, where a rising powerhouse of wind energy joins a renewable source of brain power at Southwestern Oklahoma State University. Bank First, loyal to Oklahoma, loyal to you. And CK Energy Electric Cooperative, it's the ideal partnership. CK Energy makes every customer an owner of the business. Unlike other electric utilities, CK Energy exists to make sure your needs are always met, not to make a profit. We are locally owned and operated, and we are always there with you, reinvesting in your community. That's why in an electric co op, the people have the power. Owned by our communities, committed to our members. CK is your energy. On the corner of Custer and Main Street in Weatherford, More Than Medicine stands ready to fill your prescriptions in a fast, friendly, and professional way. They also offer an outstanding selection of gifts for people of all ages. Their Gold Crown Hallmark card selection is second to none, and More Than Medicine is the perfect place for a bridal registry. All this, that's why it's called More Than Medicine. Corner of Main and Custer in Weatherford. They're on call for you 24 hours a day. The weather in western Oklahoma is unpredictable. When you need help, folks have been counting on the expertise of A-plus roofing and construction. Owned and operated by Damon Schultz, a GAF certified contractor. Fully insured with an A-plus rating by the Better Business Bureau. A-plus roofing always offers free estimates. Call today, 580-772-7587. That's 772-7587. Here before and after the storm. A-plus roofing and construction in Weatherford. Convenient Care got just even more convenient. Weatherford Convenient Care has moved locations. You can now get that convenient one-on-one personal care at the Weatherford Regional Hospital. Just enter the far west entrance, labeled Main Entrance, and they will get you checked in and on your way to fast, convenient, one-of-a-kind care. Or skip the wait and check in online at weatherfordhospital.com. Weatherford Convenient Care, now located inside the Weatherford Regional Hospital at 3701 West Main. Open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. One final time back here on the Swasu Coaches Show, continuing to talk about Swasu Golf. We've got freshman Rebecca Lau with us. Rebecca, thanks for coming out. No, I, I, you're welcome. Oh, no, don't worry about it. Hey, 
<laughs> Coach Fleetwood has his moments up here too. Don't worry. Uh, you come over here from from Malaysia. Yep. Uh, I guess first question: uh, How do you like it in the states so far? I love it. The weather's amazing. People are amazing. I would stay here. It's crazy how many people will complain about the weather out here because it's so windy and we get so sick of it. But the weather just 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 better here, right? L less humid. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm That's gonna make life a little easier for yeah, you. Yeah, the winds are colder here, and it's so much nicer. See, stop complaining about the wind, everybody. <laughs> it could be worse. Uh, so, this this week, best performance from you individually on on the course. Uh, what allowed you? Was it the golf course? Was it you just being more comfortable with your game here? Kind of what allowed you to play so well this week? Oh, well, I didn't start my first round that well, like the half of my first round. But when my the assistant coach was uh, came and followed me, he gave me a bit of boost of confidence, and he helped me so much on the second line that made me play two under and save my round for three over the day for the day. And my second round wasn't as well, but. My assistant coach was there to help me, boost me up, give me more confidence, and yeah, I managed to salvage a six over, pretty decent round for the tournament to end. Yeah. How you know? I talk about your game a little bit. You come over here as a freshman. Uh, you know, are are you long off the tee? Or are you are you like me, shorter but straight, uh, iron play, putting, all that stuff? What what are the strengths of your game? I'd say they're pretty much the same, like. That must be nice. What's that like? <laughs> Jeez. Like some days my irons are pretty decent and my putting is amazing. Or my drives are not as good, but my approach shots are pretty good. It's sometimes they even out for the day. What's the biggest difference? And I always think this is interesting. You know, because for example, when you go to England and you play link style and you come to America, it's completely different. What's playing golf on courses in the states like compared to playing courses in Malaysia? Is it pretty similar well courses here are much easier I would oh say. my gosh <laughs> but the course last week was a bit more challenging which I like it the most but um, the grass is a bit harder to play off here than back home that's the most difference interesting who knew mm -hmm. um, you know how much more comfortable have you gotten not only on on the courses and, and, and in Weatherford but also Around your teammates and around your coaches, you know how how much how much has that helped you over the last few weeks as as we're now getting to the end of the fall season? A lot. They are pretty nice. I love them so much. My team is amazing. Coaches are amazing to us, and we have bonded so much throughout the tournaments. I I they're the best, I can say for my teammates. What are like, some goals now that you've set for yourself after playing so well this week? What's the one thing that when you look forward to the rest of the season and obviously the off season in the winter, do you have, have, have you set any goals for yourself going into the spring? Oh, well, try to go low, lower on my scores and work harder with the team, trying to get our team up there, trying to win some tournaments for the team. I know that, so so next week, last tournament, right? Yep. And then you guys have your off season. Mm -hmm. You know, you've obviously got great facilities and you're able to practice in the winter. Is there one overall thing that you want to work on in the winter to, to tighten up or get better at? Or is it more of kind of maintenance of your entire game? My irons, I got to get it more accurate, like do it for my approach shots. That's all I'm going to work on for the winter. And then let's we'll see how spring comes for my game. All right. Rebecca Lau with us here on the Swansu Coaches Show. Had a great tournament, a top 10 finish for her. Thanks for coming out. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely. That's going to do it for us here from Lucille's Roadhouse. Uh, Saturday afternoon, Swansu football. It's a 3 o'clock kick, so OU Texas will be over by then. So come out to Milam Stadium. I'll have a 2 o'clock pregame on 100.3 Kyle Classic. Big thanks to Jacob, our producer, tonight here from Lucille's. And thanks to all of our guests. We'll see you next Wednesday on the Swansu Coaches Show. Right dot media. Live from Lucille's Roadhouse, it's the Swasu Coaches Show. Brought to you by ASAP Energy, Anadarko Dozer and Trucking, PSO, Pioneer Cellular, Jet Distributing, CJ Southwest Tire, Butcher's Wine and Spirits, McDonald's of Weatherford, Clinton, and Elk City, Bank First, CK Energy, More Than Medicine, A Plus Roofing, and Weatherford Regional Hospital. Now let's head out to Lucille's with Stephen McTeer. Thank <laughs> you.